All right, we are back. This time we are going to journey into King's Quest 2. Uh, King's Quest 2 is called Romancing the Throne. This is about Sir Graham, who is now the King of Daventry. Uh, he is loved by his people, but uh, there is something that he's missing, and that's companionship. And also to provide an heir for the throne, which seems kind of selfish. But whatever. So he's been looking for the right chick and uh, needs to go on a quest, right? So he looks into the magic mirror and what do we see? Da -da -da -da. He sees a vision of a quartz tower. To reach it, he must pass through the magic door in a nearby land. The scene then changes to show a beautiful girl locked within the tower. Graham knows what he must do. Which is apparently sit down put his little adventure cap on and so begins King's Quest 2 with Graham just wandering off what I never really understood is he sets off to find this land to find this lady and just starts off on a beach and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save it here because in King's Quest anything could go wrong but it just starts on this beach and it's apparently not Daventry because as you go through it You'll see people who say, I've heard of you, and you would think, uh, if this was Daventry, they would probably know you because you're their king. Alright, so first let's head over here. Uh, just like the rest of the King's Quest games, there's a lot of, um, like the fairy tale lore. So you can get a clue here that says it's grandmother's house. So you can probably guess that this is going to be like the Red Riding Hood. And because there's a basket in the mailbox because that happens all the time so I know what sometimes can be in this house and that is the big bad wolf so I'm going to save and open the door and oh dear look it's the wolf and he jumps out so that's not a good idea let's see so we have the basket so little red riding hood is around here somewhere can't remember exactly where she quote unquote spawns, but I know it's somewhere uh, around my grandmother's house. So I'm just, right now I'm just going to wander a bit, see if I can remember where she's at. So pardon me while I just, whoops, walk around. And because that's not that way, because that was the witch's cave, which we'll go to later. I have no idea why the witch lives so close to Grandma. But here we have this big door in a tree. So let's save. Tree door. Not to be confused with Hodor. So something that King's Quest is notorious for is these stairs, uh, including elevators. I survived that one, so let's go see what's over here. We have a nice little kettle going, some hats on the table, and a chest. Just like any Sierra game, if it's not nailed down, take it. Apparently I got too close to the fire. And I just took the soup. That's the thing, I just took the soup. And I don't even know where I'm storing it, right? It was a hot, boiling pot of soup, and I apparently just put it in my pocket. So let's look in the chest. Earrings. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the earrings. I don't know who any of this belongs to. I think it's that crazy dwarf or gnome. But we're just going to take it anyway. I don't know why I'm not taking the cool snazzy hat on the table. And up the ladder. Da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Oh. And that didn't end well. This is what I mean by the stairs and King's Quest are a curse. Uh, if you watched my King's Quest 1 playthrough, you know how much fun I had on the, uh, the Beanstalk where I fell off probably over 60 times and I fast forwarded it so kind of tried to make it funny. So let's be a little more cautious. Let's take a look. Ah, look, it's the thieving dwarf. So I was right. And kind of looks like he has a little Christmas hat, which is just in time because it's 
12, 13, it's almost Christmas time. So let me take this steaming hot of, uh, bowl of soup and put it back in my pocket. Open the chest, get the earrings. Yep, it's still there. All right, so now I'm back where I was a moment ago before my plummeting death from the stairs. And I'm just gonna be more cautious as I traverse this uh, ladder. You would think that uh, King Graham would know just to climb the ladder safely and not fall off. Not a very good king if you don't know how to climb the ladder. So let's go. Okay, we're back by Grandma's house. Let's go see if Grandma's home. Just in case, gonna save. Open the door. Hey, look, it's not a wolf this time. Grandma looks pale and weak. Let's give the soup to Grandma. You feed the hot chicken soup to the ailing Grandma. I feel much better, she says. She has something under the bed. It sounds kind of dirty. So she has a ruby ring and a black cloak. Now I remember what this leads to. And you've got to wonder why she has it. That ring and that cloak belong to, we'll just call him Dracula, it's a vampire. Um, why does she have it? Was she messing around with Dracula? Was she sleeping? Oh, hey, wait a minute. I believe this is where uh, Little Red Riding Hood shows up. I can't remember if you have to load in and out of the screen to make her show up, if she's not already there, or if she just randomly shows up. So give me a second, let's see. Eat. Pace back and forth. <laughs> this is one of the problems with King's Quest is there were a lot of random or chance encounters. For example, Little Red Riding Hood. Who does not want to show up? The other one, uh, which was even a greater pain, was the Eagle in King's Quest 3. I just got finished playing King's Quest 3, and let me tell you, I waited over 20 minutes, over 20 minutes, for that eagle to drop the feather. I saw him plenty of times, but he just never dropped the feather. It's really annoying. So this is something where you could be playing King's Quest, and if you didn't know that you had to find Red Riding Hood, and she only appears in one screen, that you could easily get frustrated because you wouldn't know what to do next because it's such a random chance encounter and as you can see I've walked back and forth off that screen several times and she's not showing up so I'm pretty sure this is the screen so I'm just gonna keep fiddling around until she decides to show up so I'll just walk over here go one screen over this is the chapel. Oh, a beautiful fairy floats down. She is actually pretty important because there's a couple of things in this game that will attempt to kill you, and her quote unquote spell or blessing will uh, actually drive them away. So it's kind of nice to have that. Well, we might as well throw in the cloak, even though you don't see it, which is odd. Kind of like that bowl of soup I just put in my pocket from the dwarf. I like that I try to kneel and it says not now, but if I pray, I kneel. Seems like he would just let me kneel and then just pray. Like you get points that way. Alright, well let's talk to this monk. Gives me a silver cross. So 
So this is all clearly leading up to the Dracula. Since I'm wearing the cloak and the ring, let's slap on the cross. Thank you, sir. It's probably the only time you actually see an actual religious symbol is the cross for the uh, Christian cross. Because nowhere else do you see that in King's Quest. Like it's just not there. So it's interesting that they that they do the cross. I, I understand. Ooh, look who it is, and she does just randomly appear. All right, so let's talk to her. Okay. Okay, now she's too far away. Clearly, you would think that if I'm talking to the girl, she would just stop and listen. Gratefully, Little Red Riding Hood takes the basket. Now she's much happier and skipping around. Alright. So let's press on. King Graham. What shall we steal that's not nailed down? Alright. Anytime you see a hole, whether it's in a rock, a tree, anything, just assume, like this, there, there's a brooch hidden in this rock. Why? Who knows? Like, who put it there? But you can assume, kind of like anything that's not nailed down in King's Quest, you just take it. So if there's a hole, rest assured there's something in there that you need and you should take. I believe there's a couple more situations where there's a hole <laughs> in this game, and you have to find the redum random item that is in there. Eek. All right, hold on. So the one thing I remember about this bridge is you can only cross it so many times before the bridge actually collapses. So what I'm going to do here is save. Thought I was here, and it's probably one screen up. Yeah, there it is. Well, that's another way that King's Quest 2 is kind of deceptive because that bridge, if you didn't know it and you were playing this game across the bridge too many times, like I said, that bridge, if I remember correctly, collapses. And that's a dead end. Like, if you've gotten all these things across the bridge too many times and it collapses, you're going to have to restore. So now I've read the inscription to the door, now we're just going to see how we can get past it. Let's cross this bridge. Let's see, every time you cross it, you get a point. My score went from 40 to 41. So it's kind of deceptive every time you cross it. Now oh, I get another point. And here's another case where you can clearly see that there's a hole in that tree. And so we need to um, look in it, get something in there. Okay. There's clearly a hole in that tree. There's something we have to do here. Not right now. I can't do that. <laughs> there. There's got to be some way to get into that tree. I'll come back to it. And there's that thieving dwarf. Which is ironic. I stole from the dwarf, but I'm afraid that he's going to steal back from me. And see, we have a split log here, so there's probably something in the split log. Right, nothing in there, but let's follow it to this side. A uh, flashing necklace. So like I said, if there's a chance that there's a hole, there's probably something in there to take. 
So in this place, we found a brooch earlier in the rock. Now we find a necklace in this tree. And I'm certain there's something to that other tree with the rocks in front of it that has a hole. So... It even tells you there's a sizable hole. Alright. Oh, so just standing up, tilting the other way, I can now see that there's a mallet inside this tree. Who put the mallet there? We don't know. It's just there. So some of the logic that you find in King's Quest 2, for lack of a better word, if you want to call it logic, is kind of odd also. I mean, it's the general rule of if it's not nailed down, take it. And if there's a hole in something, look in it. Across the way, we can see a castle, and that, if memory serves me right, is the castle of Dracula. That's why all the trees look dead. Everything is poisoned. Vegetation looks dead. And there's an island in the middle of this poison lake. So clearly, swimming is not an option. So, something we will need for Dracula will be the stake, so that we can stake him. I just need to remember where the stake is at. If I'm not mistaken, it is somewhere... somewhere around the lake. Like, it's leaning against one of the trees. So let's take a let's take a tour around this lake. Let's see if we can find a stake. Not intentionally trying to run. I just do it all the time. Clearly that's not where the stake's at. Sometimes if you say, get something, it'll say that you're not close enough. So sometimes that's a way to trick to see if it's on that screen or not. And there's a cliff in there. So I'm back here. Alright, Dracula, I'm coming for you. I just need to find that stick. Oh, let's see. I can't remember if the enchantment was still on me, so I just took a dive. Oh. And there she is. Oh, see, so the enchantment was still in place, that's why. It drove off the hack. Alright. Broken tree. There's a hole here. Look hole. You see nothing special. <laughs> One of the exceptions where there was actually nothing in the hole. Make no mistake, I'm just wandering at this point, looking for that stake. I'm beginning to suspect that maybe it's not around the lake, because everything around the lake is like a dead tree. And I'm pretty sure that the stake was leaning against like a healthy tree. Let's 
see. Can that be a mistake? <laughs> so apparently that's just roots. Back here again, gone too far. Well, we haven't seen this screen before, right? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we have quite a few times. Just trying to remember where that stupid stick is. We just took a walk around the lake, so it's probably going to be like one screen off of the lake. Let's see. Alright, let's take a look over here. And usually rule of thumb is in King's Quest, if you found an item on a screen, chances are that's the only item on the screen. So we already found like the necklace and stuff on that previous screen. So chances are, eh, it's not on that screen. So just need to go like a couple screens over to this big field. Looking for like something that, oops. Alright. It'd help if I actually got a map of this area before I decided to just walk around. When is this hag going to learn to leave me alone? Oops. She really, really likes to hang out on the screen. Oh, hey. <laughs> that is probably the stake. Ta da there it is. Alright, so now I've got the stake. I'm trying to remember what else I need to fight Dracula. I know there's the stake and the mallet. Because you basically use those to kill Dracula. through a couple other screens, and there's a shell. Randomly, a diamond bracelet inside of a shell. You would think inside of a shell there would just be, I don't know, a pearl. But apparently people like to leave stuff on the beach, like valuable possessions. So, oops. Let's take a look. Let's take a little look see around the beach. See if we can find anything else. We're just cruising and look at that. What we have here is some gum, some trident gum. Again, I have no idea where I'm keeping all these possessions. Uh, the trident with the big pot of stew, even though we gave the stew to grandma, so I didn't, I guess I technically still don't have it. And that's another thing. So if you jump in the water, King Graham doesn't automatically swim. You actually have to tell him to swim. Otherwise, in a short time, he will actually drown. 
Now, how that makes any sense at all is beyond me. Because if the character already has the ability to swim, you would think he would just automatically start to swim. It's not like King Graham gets out of bed and he falls down because he didn't type walk. You know what I mean? It's just odd. And hey, a sexy mermaid. Clearly, I should be playing Legion Theory 2. Where he goes looking for love on the beach and all that stuff. That's where this mermaid belongs. I made a couple directories when I'm saving my King's Quest games because I don't like to uh, save over an existing game unless I haven't done very much. Like if I've moved one screen and I've found something different, I'll save. But uh, what I've done is I created multiple directories for all my King's Quest games so that I can make more than the, uh, in the original King's Quest you can only do, I think it was 12 save games. So I made multiple directories so I can save more than just those 12. She beckons me with her hand. Not sure how many of you have played King's Quest 2, so I'm just letting it sit here for a second. So, if you're not a fast reader, plenty of time to read this. flowers and got me a seahorse. Whoa. Okay. So this is odd, right? So King Graham, if you don't type swim, he drowns. But he sits on a freaking magic seahorse and suddenly breathing underwater is no longer a problem. So clearly, this is supposed to be Neptune, and Neptune owns a trident, so let's give the trident back. And he opens a clam, which has a large golden key. Alright. Get key. I could just hang out here with my cool little seahorse, but we'll head back because there is a quest. We must find the maiden at the tower. And up we go. Thank you, seahorse. Resuming our quest after the brief flirtation with the uh, mermaid. Cruise down the beach, see if there's any other possessions that are just randomly laying about. Alright, this we're back to the screen where we started. Oh, here I am drowning in a foot of water. So we can't proceed north of this screen from here anyway. But we can from here. And this is the Hags area. There is a uh, I don't know if I'm still protected. There is a Easter egg where at times you can apparently see... Uh-oh. 
Oh, you can apparently see the Batmobile coming out of this cave. Uh, I've yet to see it happen from the times I've been playing it other than like once in my life. So let's take a look. Obviously there is the Nightingale, Human Skulls, a cauldron bubbling with brew. times where you just randomly put <laughs> a huge nightingale cage somewhere in your possession. Not entirely sure why we had to cover the nightingale to get it out of the cave, because it immediately comes off after you exit the cave. Understand if like someone was sleeping in the cave when you tried to steal it, but that wasn't the case. So if you know what the purpose of covering the nightingale birdcage was before exiting the cave, feel free to leave it in the comments for anyone who is watching this and listening to me uh, drone on as I try to remember how to play or. Not how to play, but how to find everything in King's Quest 2. Because as I said, the logic in this game isn't always there. Like finding random possessions inside of uh, holes of rocks and trees. Uh, and apparently covering the nightingale cage. Whoa. Uh, to silence it, only to take off the cover as soon as you get out. Okay, we unlock the door and presto, bingo, there's another door. Read the inscription. Door two. So pretty much remember that you don't get out obviously this early because we still have Dracula to deal with. And the clue is something about setting your sights high. So let's see what that's about. I vaguely remember a carpet ride in this game. I just can't remember offhand where I got it. <laughs> yep, yep. Drowning in a foot of water. Oh, hey, it's the first time we've come across this green. like a store. A little sign of the <laughs> Open. There you go. How may I help you? She's rocking in that chair really fast. Motion stories an oil lamp. This is a new item in my shop. I thought you might be interested in how did she know? Can't just take the lamp. 
Oh, there we go. So we know that the fairy spell's worn off. The oil lamp is expensive. I'll see two treasures. What's the bird? So apparently there's two ways to get this oil lamp. Uh, you can give her two treasures, which I don't know what that is. Oh, that's probably like the brooch. And like the uh, necklace. I bet you that's what that is. But we just gave her the nightingale and she gave it to us. Master, I leave a gift for you. There's a fine carpet. So this is for setting sights high, much easier than climbing a beanstalk. Alright. Ah, uh, yes. I remember this. This is one of those silly riddles. There's two ways to pass it, apparently. You can kill the snake, and you get less points for it. Or, uh, yeah, the beautiful sword. of other bridles. And now that's my three wishes, apparently. So you can either kill it and get less points, or through some random logic, if you throw the bridle, look what happens. It turns into a magical horse. Not what I expected, right? When you throw a bridle at a snake, who would think it turned into a magic horse? Now I have a sugar cube to protect me against the poison, which I remember being the poison at uh, Dracula's castle right outside. And there's another hole. Let's look inside. Wait, another adventure game? What could be going on? Hey, it's Roger Wilco in Space Quest Chapter 1. The Saren Encounter by the two guys from Andromeda. In deep space, a vessel drifts. Unbeknownst to you, the dreaded Sarens are the bad guys. Space Quest is a 3D adventure game. As a hero, you will explore bizarre planets. Uh oh. Get friendly with the wildlife, and get acquainted with some darn interesting folks. Originally those aliens, if I am not mistaken, become, well, they're aliens, but I think in the game they eventually become ZZ Top. I can't remember if they are removed later for legal reasons, but I think in the earlier versions uh, they are ZZ Top, or that's who they're supposed to be. Alrighty then. That was also not what I expected by looking in there, so let's go here. And so help me if it stares. Okay. It looks just like the Hag's Cave. Without the cauldron, the skulls, and the nightingale. It's just now there's a key. Cool. So this is clearly the second key for set the sights high for that door. back to the ledge. You know, I was just thinking, why didn't the magic horse hang out and get me right off of here instead of me using the, uh, the magic carpet? Because the magic horse doesn't appear again. And here we go. I feel like Aladdin.
once again, nearly just drowning in a foot of water. And then back for the uh, the door place. Although need to be more cautious because the fairy's magic spell has worn off. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem because I don't think we have to deal with the hag or anything. I think after this, we open the next door, it's going to give us a clue about going after Dracula, and that's when the uh, the guy, Death, whatever you want to call him, the guy on the boat, will be there so that we can get to Dracula's castle. Must have a stout heart. Or kill one. Heart of Steel is, in case you didn't know, it's a reference to a band called Crimson Glory. It is one of their cool songs. Cross the bridge and get another point. So... I think we just pretty much head south until we hit the, uh, the lake. Oh, good. The fairy came back. Uh, she's thrown it from the front of the uh, chapel. Cool. Couldn't help but make a Lee Shoot Larry reference. We did just see Space Quest 1. So why not squeeze a Leash Suit Larry reference into King's Quest 2? I have no idea where I'm going. I'm trying to remember the best way to Dracula's castle slash lake. He walks much faster diagonally, it seems like. Hey, and look, there's the death dude who is now at the, at the edge of the lake, because now we've unlocked the door. He won't appear until you've unlocked that door. Oh yeah, too far away. Yep, see, the ruby ring and the black cloak. Once again, this begs the question why Grandma had it. Uh, was she having an affair with Dracula? Were they an uh, intimate item at some point? Yeah, if I remember correctly, these little branches, if they pricked you and you didn't have the sugar cube, you were dead. So, oh, loading screen, ooh. There's two ghosts guarding the door. The situation looks bad. So... Can't remember if I just walk up to him. Yeah, just walk up to him and they see the... Black cloak and ruby ring and thank you, Dracula. Alright. So, now we're in here. Uh, look, it's, it's not stairs, but uh, it's pretty much stairs, even though it's not. It's It really is. It's just another death trap. Because <laughs> apparently King Graham, if you don't direct him exactly, does not know how to walk up <laughs> a flight of stairs or whatever this is supposed to be. Hey, if these aren't stairs, what exactly is that? That's... It's a lot of pressure on your knees. Okay. So, once again, if it's not nailed down, take it. There's a candle, so we're gonna take it. 
remember correctly, there is a, uh, a dark dungeon that we're going to need this candle for. It's not going to matter. I'm going to leave that drawer open because we're going to kill Dracula, so it's not going to matter if I leave it open or not. Going down these murderous stairs. Ramp. Whatever. Something you should always do, not just in King's Quest, but any Sierra game, is save early, save often. Uh, I guess death can happen on the very next screen. Uh, looks like we have some bread. Or it's ham. It looks like bread to me, but it's actually ham. <laughs> look like very bad ham. Stairs that no. Oh. Let's try that again. Don't go too far to the edge. Ah, uh, that's where I made a mistake. We need to actually light the candle in order for it to be effective. So there are a couple torches. Probably can't reach those on the chandelier. Uh, <laughs> probably not going to reach that one. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, it's probably that right there. So you basically get the candle if you don't light it right as you're coming down the stairs you're gonna have to come back and light candle sure enough candle is now lit dope okay well at least from that height i did not die cruise it back Just in case. That is an insanely powerful candle. <laughs> Look how well lit this cavern is suddenly. That's remarkable. It's a nice creepy room with mice running around, some shackles on the wall. Frickin' extra flight of stairs. So that's, I believe that's Dracula's chamber. Right in here. Yup. So, oop. And now he's there. Randomly, even though I was walking back and forth, I don't know how he got into his room without seeing me, but there it is. Oh, look at that. There's a vampire. Kill Dracula. Yeah. Using the mallet, you pound the stake through his heart. Wow. Uh, that was kind of brutal. <laughs> Alright, look in the coffin. Set pillow. Lo and behold, get key. All right. So now we have the next key for the stout heart. Damn, mouse is gonna trip me. And back up the stairs. Just because I hate the stairs, we're gonna save. Not that I'm at all paranoid. Uh, 
Now that I think about it, the only thing... Are you kidding me? More stairs? <laughs> the only thing that has killed me in this playthrough so far has actually been stairs. Like the hag has not killed me or anything like that. It's only been these ridiculous stairs, which I mean at that point looks like he's climbing the wall. And look, another chest. So... Oops, unlock chest. The old chest is now unlocked. Open chest. The creek. The interior chest, you see a dazzling diamond sapphire tiara. Alright, so that's everything out of there. Pretty sure a fall from this height would probably kill me. Oh, I can probably use, I bet, that torch to also light the candle. That's something for King's Quest 2, like this game being made back then, like the flames and the fire, how they did it so it looked animated. Really impressive. For the limit of being 16 colors, they did a lot to make this game work. I'm pretty sure I could even draw half of this stuff in 16 colors and make it look this good. Alright, trying to get in the boat without falling in the lake. Alright, I'm out of the boat. High five, death. to the bridge with the door. I believe this is the last key. After this we should be able to enter the other kingdom, realm, whatever you want to call it where we will find our beloved maiden in the tower. Revealing a world unlike any you've seen ever before. And I would say this is definitely a world that I've never ever seen before. It looks like a psychedelic trip. Okay. <laughs> Once again, on the beach, if you can call that a beach, uh, there's just randomly a net. Get net. So clearly we have to use this fishing net somewhere. Use no. Hmm. All right, let's try a different location. You've caught a large golden fish. That is a large golden fish. Alright, get fish. Yield the fish as it twists and turns in your hands. Throw fish. So, you caught the fish and you throw him back in, and he's happy to be thrown back in. And now we just ride him. Just like the seahorse, and he's really fast. And apparently just projects you onto the island. Island. OK. 
I'm just I don't remember metal. There's something right up there. Randomly. Oh, amulet. Amulet. Just sitting there. Thing is, there's a lot of stuff in my inventory that... Oh. And that looks like the tower. I was just gonna say, there's a lot of stuff in my inventory that... I don't... I don't think gets used. I know some of it is probably for alternative puzzles, like the store owner and the treasures. But, oh, more stairs. <laughs> King's Quest, why do you hate me? And it's more of those weird stairs. Not even like regular stairs. So let's slowly make our way up. I just saved on the island, so, oh. Jeez, more stairs. I was going to say, I just saved on the island, but now these stairs are getting kind of long. <laughs> and, oh, be careful, there is a huge lion with dripping fangs at the top of the stairs. So, how about some of that weird ham? Uh, he falls asleep. That is the quickest. <laughs> I've ever seen a lion fall asleep. Ah, uh, you have found her, the girl from the town. Wow. No offense, but she's... she's pretty stacked. Look, woman, she is even more lovely than she appeared in the mirror. She has the bluest eyes you've ever seen, and soft, creamy skin. Talk, woman. What is your name? Graham. King Graham. Kids, woman, come closer, kind so Look at that. She doesn't even know a thing about me, and she's fallen in love with me. That's pretty awesome. There's no time for small talk. Ooh, let's go home. Whoosh. And just like that. Congratulations, King Graham. You've won the hand of the beautiful Felix. There's all the little creatures. Although I don't know who is sitting in front of the thieving dwarf, that big yellow dude leaned over, or the dude next to the thieving dwarf. He's my, oh, these are also characters from King's Quest 1. There's Dracula, also. Got his heart pounded. And now we're back at the castle. If you've enjoyed this game, please ask your dealer about its availability. Of King's Quest 3 to air as human. Alright, so that is King's Quest 2. I actually got 185 out of 185. Huh. I don't think I've probably ever gotten a full score on this game before. Probably because I did the, uh, the bridle with the snake and stuff like that rather than using the sword, which is probably what I did the first time I played it. So, 185 out of 185, so if you're paying attention and you needed a perfect score in King's Quest 2, this video provided those answers for you. So hopefully you kept your eyes peeled, took note of what I did, and enjoyed this random playthrough of King's Quest 2. Next in line, as you could probably guess, is King's Quest 3.